Praise the Lord. I, I want to begin this morning with um, those that I gave an assignment last Sunday. So are they here? We had two ladies and two gentlemen. Yes, I've got the names. The five of them, actually. So where are you? This is Sister Yetunde Basho. Come forward. Where is she? I've got your telephone number. I'll start calling you now. All right. Uh, Amiema Etebet. Come. Abdullahi Chelsea. Okpambo Chuku Di Mabi. Michael Boyo. Where are you? Now they're not going to act like they're not here. Come. Come quickly. Just come to the front. You came. Oh, beautiful. There they are. Wonderful. No, don't hold her like that. Like she, she. Which one is your name? I'm righteous. Great. You look great. Come. Yes, yes, yes. I remember you. And you. And you too. All right. So, did you get the tapes? Yes. You did. And you too. Did you get the tapes? You didn't. Did you get the tapes? Yes. Beautiful. Can I have a microphone? All right. Let me start from you. Did you have your questions answered? Mm, no. No. All right. Which question do you have that has not been answered? Uh, I said I don't believe in paying of tithes. And after listening to the tapes, you still didn't get any answer? Yes. All right. What was uh, the tape? Which one did you first, listen to? <clears throat> don't worry. Just, which one did you listen to? First route and the offering. You listen to that, mm. and you didn't get to believe in Tyson. All right, yes. just hold on. I'll come back to you. Yep. Praise God. When you listened, did you wear your yeah? That was clear. The tip and I, I got the message. You got the message. Yes, sir. Is it clear to you now? Yes, sir. What was wrong before? I did not believe in false, uh, false fruit offering before. Do you believe in it now? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, yeah. Did you get the tapes? Yes, I did. Did you have your doubts cleared? No, yeah, everything's all right now. Everything's all right now? Yeah. What was wrong before? <laughs> okay, um, I believe it. I didn't understand what okay. the first row was all about, but after watching the tape, everything is okay. Now you understand? Yeah, very well. Beautiful. What about you? You, you didn't get the tapes, you I said? Tapes, I'm going to give you another week, all right? I think it's not available on um, audio format. Don't worry. They'll get it for you. They are hearing me now. So you go back to them and tell them I sent you and they've got to get you the audio tapes. They'll give them to you. I'll give you another week. Which one is your name? Michael Boyo. Michael Boyo. Next Sunday. All right. Deal. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Now you hold on. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now I've got one gentleman here. Which one is your name? Chuku Dimibi Okpambo. What's the meaning of your name? My name is... Chukudu maybe, God help me to live. Okay. God help me to live. Oh, God help you to live. All right. And the second one is. Oh, Bambo. Meaning. Bambo is a. Uh, is that is, is to cut the finger. That's my father's name. Is your name now? Uh, you're answering it. Your father is not here now. You're answering this name. Okay. What's the meaning? It's cotton finger. Maybe it's a. They say it's a, a nickname that took over him. So they started calling him Okbambo. Cutting the finger? Yes, that is cutting finger. The Israel name is uh, Iwegu. No, forget. You, you didn't answer that one. It's here. You said Okbambo yeah. Chuku Dimebi. Yeah. Cutting the finger. Yeah. Uh, that's what you said. Yes. That's what you said. Well, I've told you about names before. We'll come to that. Now you said, after listening to the tapes, you still didn't believe in tithing. Yes. When were you born again? It's now, say, 1990. Just 1990? Yes. 
you know, for some of you, it's like a long time ago. For some of us, he's just coming. All right, 1990. That's when you were born again. Yeah. And since then, you have not been able to believe in tithing. Yes. What is tithe? Mm, that is giving of uh, one tenth of all that you have. Maybe your monthly salary is. Uh, is uh, the Bible writes monthly, monthly salary. Is ten thousand? No, you give. I just want to know. Did you say monthly salary? Yes. Maybe what you have annually. Did the Bible say annually? No. What did you read? I just want to know from you what you what you understood. That's from what you have. All what you have. The Bible says all what you have. Yes. Okay. Now I, I, I'm trying to know what, what information he has. All right. So what should you do with the tenth part of it? One tenth of it? Uh, you give it to God. You give it to God. Uh, Where did you see that? In the Bible? Yes. It's in the Bible and uh, they'll be teaching me in the church. But uh, there was a time I went out to preach the word of God. So I met somebody who taught me that they are not supposed to be paying attention. I asked him, where did you get that? He said it's from the Bible. I asked him to show me. He showed me the book of uh, Hebrew. We will go there just now. Listen, they taught him in the church to pay his tithe. When he went out to discuss with other people, somebody outside the church taught him that what they taught him in church was wrong. Where did they meet the person? Outside. Was it in a church? No. Someone told him that what he was taught in church several years ago. What church was that? Anglican. Well, he was, whatever he was taught in church, somebody out in the street told him that the church was wrong. Are you listening to this now? And that fellow opened the Bible to him and showed him something. What was it? It's Hebrew. Hebrews. So I should read the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Read that, it out. That. No, just read it. Then uh, you will explain it to us. I will read. I understand what you read. I will have to read. Okay, hold on. Time. You were told that you have to read everything. Uh, Take us to the place that convinced you. Like this place. He said, now, let me read from 8 to 12. He said, here, tithes are received by mortal men. Dear, by one whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Levi himself, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, for he was still in the lands of his ancestors when Meshizedek met him, met him. Now, if perfection had been attained, attainable through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need would there have been? Another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek, rather than one named after the order of Aaron. For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is a necessary, there's necessarily a change in the law as well. All right, question. What did you gain from here? From, from here, I gained that, I gained that formerly uh, the, the priesthood, they come from the descendants of uh, the Levi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when Jesus Christ came, when he died for us, he became our high priest. So it is no longer the Levi that are now the high priest. Uh, at, at that time, when God was appointing the Levi as the priest, he commanded to be taking one tenth of whatever they have from their people. But now Jesus Christ has become a, our, high, our high, high priest, priest and have died for us. And since he died for us, that law mm -hmm. that Moses gave to them, the commandment, is cancelled. No, it's cancelled. Cancel. You are correct. Okay, so Titan is cancelled with it. Uh, okay, listen, am I Levi? You are Levi. Me? Yes. Am I Levi? The Levi. Levi no. well, no, I pronounce no, Levi, no, you no, call no, it Levi. No. But am I, am I Levi? No. What is the connection between me and Levi? The connection between you and Levi, there's no connection, only that. So I can say you are a priest. Okay, uh, but they told you Jesus Christ has become the high priest. Yes. And we are his priests. Yes. So, what is your problem? Uh, well, after listening to him, uh, uh, you see, when I received this, uh, I was supposed to make inquiry from God. Okay. So, well, okay, hold on. Look at You made inquiry from God. Yes. Where did you meet him? It was. Uh, 
uh, God. Hold on. Let me help you. I don't want to. Let me help you with the scriptures you read. All right? Will you? Can I ask you a question? If, if it was made clear, or if it were made clear to you, would you accept the truth? I will not accept any other thing than what I've heard from God. What you've heard from God? Uh, what I've seen. Uh, All right. Now, whatever you heard from God, if it is inconsistent with what is in this book, will you be ready to accept that that thing, therefore, didn't come from God? No, because it's from God. I know it's from God. Hold on. God cannot contradict his word. All right? His teaching throughout scripture is consistent. You cannot hear from God anything that is inconsistent with his scriptures. Otherwise, how would men judge what they hear from voices? The only way we know that the voice that's talking to us is God's spirit is when it is consistent with his word. So I, I, want to, I want to begin with the scriptures that you read and explain to you. All right? Because somebody explained to you first. Then you said you went to consult with God. All right? Now, I've heard people say that, but any time they were, whatever they heard was inconsistent with what was in the Bible, their lives got messed up. So if God spoke to you, Whatever he told you will be consistent with the scriptures. Now, this is your Bible, so I'm going to read it to you. Okay. All right? Okay, let's begin from here. Now, the Bible says when we prophesy, others should judge. The Bible says that others should not just accept whatever someone is prophesying just because they said God spoke to them. He said the rest of them should judge whether the prophecy is right or not. So now, you have something you said you heard from God that you said was consistent with what you read in the way that you understood it. So, there are God's people here, and they ought to be able to judge whether the interpretation that you gave to what you read was consistent with what you actually read. Now, I want to read it to you, okay? All right. Hebrews chapter number 8, you began from verse what? From verse 7. All right. Okay, chapter 7. Yes, chapter 7. Where did you read from? Verse? I read from verse 8. All right. He says, from chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, he read from verse 8. I want to read from verse 1. Okay? Because we have to put the whole thing in context. Now, because of time, he didn't want to read everything because he said he would have read the whole chapter. So I want to read from verse 1. For, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Can I ask you a question? Who was Melchizedek? Melchizedek. He has no natural descent. I don't know. All right. Who was, who was Abraham? Abraham. Abraham and Moses. Who came first? Abraham. Abraham. Yes. You sure? Yes. Abraham and the law of Moses. Which came first? Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Abraham was before Moses, and therefore before the law of Moses. Okay, from verse 1 again. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, to Melchizedek, to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He gave Melchizedek his tithes, which was before the law. Abraham gave tithes before Moses was born. And before Moses gave the law. What does that mean? That tithing was before the law. What does the Bible say about Abraham? It says Abraham is the father of faith. And that all those who are children of faith are children of Abraham. Now, come on. Let's read. Let's go to verse 4. See how great he is. Abraham the patriarch, saying how great, how great Melchizedek is. He says, Abraham the patriarch gave him a tithe of the spoils. 
And those descendants of Levi who receive the priestly office have a commandment in the Lord to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brethren, though these also are descendants of Abraham. Now watch this. He says the Levites. The Levites were the children of who? Were they before Abraham or after Abraham? The, the Levites. The Levites. Yes. Is after Abraham. Great. Because Levi himself was uh, the son of Jacob. All right? Yeah. Who was the grandson of Abraham? Now, what's he telling us here? Levi, because you see, the promise of the Messiah was given to Abraham. He said, in your seed shall all the nations of the world be blessed. There was no law. Levi was the son of Jacob. And Jacob gave tithes according to the Bible. How did he know about tithes? From Abraham and therefore from Isaac. For the Bible says that these were prophets of God. And Jacob gave tithes. He said it. Now, but there's no record about Levi. Because there's so little that we learn about Levi. And then up until Moses before the law came. So that's why you're told that Levi himself paid tithes in Abraham. That's to say that while he was still in the loins of Abraham. In other words, Abraham actually when he gave tithes, gave tithes for all of us. Are you hearing this? But then he brought it as a law in the days of Moses. So that they would live by faith and act as children of Abraham. And do what Abraham did. Jesus said to the Jews, if you were children of Abraham, you would do his deeds. Yes. All right, now let me come to this part here. And those descendants of Levi who received the priestly office have a commandment in the Lord to take tithes from the people, that is from their brethren, though these also are descendants of Abraham. So the Levites were like the priests in the days of Moses, in the days of the law. They were made the priests, the descendants of Levi, during the Aaronic priesthood. All right. But this man, who has not their genealogy, who is he talking about? Melchizedek. He says, Melchizedek was not of the genealogy of Levi. He was greater than Levi. He was greater than Abraham. So the comparison that we start here in, in chapter 7 is not between the priests of the New Testament and, and the priests of the Old Testament, but between the Aaronic priesthood and Christ. So he has to first let them know that Melchizedek, who was a type of Christ, was greater than Abraham, who was the father of Levi. Now, he says here, but this man who was, who, who has not their genealogy received tithes from Abraham and blessed him, who had the promises. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. He says, because Melchizedek blessed Abraham, definitely Melchizedek was superior to Abraham. That's what he's telling us. He says, here, watch it now, tithes are received by mortal men. Then he says, there, by the one of whom it is testified that he lives. What's he talking about? This is fantastic. He, he lets us know, when I asked you, who was Melchizedek? You said he had no human descent. Correct. All right. So he's trying to tell us that Melchizedek was likened to the king of kings. Christ Jesus. Who is above. So when Abraham gave tithes, he gave to one who was not of this world. Are you hearing this? He says, but in the world, here, he says, in the, the Levitical priesthood, the men, mortal men, he says, receive tithes. Now let's go on. One might even say that Levi himself, now notice the language. He says, one might even say, 
One might even say that Levi himself, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. For he was still in the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him, when he met Abraham. Now, if perfection had been attainable through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek? He says, if the Aaronic priesthood brought perfection, why should there have been a promise for another priest to arise, not in the order of Levi, but in the order of Melchizedek? What is he saying? That Jesus Christ is a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Which means, when you give your tithes, you don't look for a Levi or a Levite. In those days, you could not give your, your, your tithes to someone from the tribe of Judah. You couldn't give it to someone from the tribe of Benjamin. You couldn't give it to, the, to anybody from any other tribe. You had to give it to the Levites. Because the Levites were appointed to take the tithes. So he says, now, you don't look for a Levite. Who was this written to? To the Hebrews. Because they were the ones who were prone to sticking with the law. When they wanted to give their tithes, they had to look for a Levite. Now, Paul says, you don't need to look for a Levite. Because there is a new priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. You don't give it to a Levite. You give it to one who is in the name of Jesus. There is a new priesthood. So it says Jesus Christ receives the tithes in the order of Melchizedek. That's all he's telling you. So when you look at you have to understand the context of the argument. He wasn't telling you not to give your tithes. He was telling you who to give it to. Now, if the tithing were to be done through the Levites, it would be wrong for you to bring your tithes to this place. You would have to look for a Levite. And I want to remind you that when the Jews were scattered all around the world, people who believed proselytes had to look for a Jew to give tithes. They had to look for a Jew. What am I telling you? The context of the discussion. You know, the problem with a lot of people is they study the Bible. Why I know this so well, I want to tell you, because there was a time I did not believe in tithing. This is many years ago. So I studied everything, every argument that anybody could bring out in the Bible against tithing. I remember one time I sat with my dad. He was talking about tithing. And I said tithing was wrong. So I said, the New Testament, in the New Testament, you're supposed to give your tithes. He said, where did you get that? And I tried. I talked about this. I didn't have enough information. And then I brought out so many other things. He just listened. When I was through, he said to me, he said, I have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation 2. And then he said, he began to, but in my mind, I was not ready to accept what he said. In my mind, I was not ready to accept what he said. I just took it in my mind that he had been brainwashed. And so whatever he was going to tell me, he was already brainwashed. So I sat and listened to him. He spoke from one scripture to another. But my mind was clogged, blocked. Now when he was through, I left thinking he hasn't understood what I found out. Guess what? I sat down to pick some of the scriptures that he said so that I could present a better argument next time. I was amazed at what I saw. <laughs> That's what changed me. When I took the scriptures, I didn't know. I said, I said a lot of things that were assumptions. So, it was, oh, on and on and on and on and on, I could not have a true foundation for saying that tithing was wrong. 
because the more I studied, the more it became clear to me that it was the right thing to do. Now, mind you, when I did not believe in tithing, I was tithing. I, I'm trying to tell you something. I was tithing just because the church then said tithe. So I was tithing, but I didn't believe in it. Praise God. So that's why when I meet people who, who say that um, they don't believe in tithing, I, I'm not embarrassed at all for you to speak openly because I know that there's nothing you can say. All those who say that have assumptions. They didn't read the Bible properly. They just read them out of context and then decided they didn't believe. The problem is a lot of them don't like to give their tithes. I was given my tithes then because it was small. I didn't have much. Now, you know, I was much younger, a student. What did I have? It was easy to give the tithe. If it had been bigger, sure enough, it would have been a big challenge. So maybe I was programming myself for the big ones. So in the days to come, I would say, my tithe, no! Praise God. If you don't want to give your tithe, keep it. I've told you before. God bless you. Go and make up your mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things that you ask yourself about the Word of God is very simple. Uh, you know, in a very familiar scripture that most people know about tithing, he says, bring ye all the tithes and all the offerings. All right? God says to bring it. Then he says, and watch out. If I will not open the windows of heaven and bless you. Now, which means there is a promise for doing it. And then he says there is a curse for not doing it. Now, let's suppose that it was right to give the tithe. And then you didn't give it just because you didn't accept it. What do you get? A curse. If you gave it and it was wrong, what do you lose? You know, the reasoning of many people. You know, because they think, well, that pastor wants to get something from us. Oh, that pastor. Oh, that pastor. <laughs> Keep what you got. There are, more, uh, there are others who believe. Everywhere I go, people want to give me money. A lot of people give me lots of money. Why there are those who are saying, ah, he just wants to take our money. There are those who are wanting to give me so much and give more and more and more. Why are you I am going to give you Don't give it. Keep it. I got more. No, some of you have been here for years. Since you have been here. All these years that you've known me, have I gone less or less or less? So it's a question you ask yourself. The right thing to do is, let's, let's assume this was a club, all right? How can you be a, man, a member of a church where we say we believe in tithing and you refuse to tithe? It's wrong. In a club, if they told you to give a, 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 a monthly due, you'd pay for being a member. You wouldn't say, I don't believe in dues. No, now you're in the house again. In the house again, a lot of people want to air their own opinions. Well, I got my own opinion. I don't give no tithe. You don't give tithe, you are not a true member of the church. Period. That's a fact. Now, that's not because Pastor Chris said it, but because the Word of God is clear on the issue. He didn't say that when you give your tithe, it's a free will offering. There's a difference between your tithe and your free will offering. He says, pay your tithe. Meaning that the tithe is not yours, it belongs to God. So when you don't give it, he says, you're a robber in the house of God. You're taking what belongs to God. If you remain a member of a club, for example, and you partake of all the, 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 the benefits and the privileges of the members of the club, and you don't give your, your dues, you're a thief. It's very simple. Hallelujah. Tithers are winners. Oh, yes. Tithers are winners. 
There is a connection. There's a connection. You can't, you can't be a consistent tither and have Satan defeat you in any area of your life. He can't. There may be trouble, but you will win. So when you study your Bible, you see all those things. Praise God forevermore. Now, yet there are some other Christians who don't believe in church membership. They go to church, but they don't believe in membership. They say, I, I'm a member of the body of Christ. That's what they say. They, they don't believe in being a member of a church, a local church. They say, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Brother, where do you worship? Well, presently, I am worshiping in presently. They're trying to tell you they've been somewhere else and they, are, they will be going somewhere else after this time. Presently, I'm a member of Christ the Mercy. Okay, so he doesn't know when, how, when the wind is going to blow. And then um, a voice is going to tell him, get out of here and, and move to the next bus stop. That's the way some Christians are. So they tell you, they don't believe in denominations. They don't believe in uh, local churches. Some even say they don't believe in names of churches. We are brethren. All of us are brethren. So they put a signboard and call it Brethren Worshipping at Number So and So and So. The name of that church is Brethren. <laughs> yeah, they may say they don't believe in names, so that's their name. Hallelujah. So maybe you're sitting here now like St. Peter and St. Paul, but you're, you say, I don't believe in being a member of a local church. Are you a member here? No, I worship here. I'm a worshiper at Christ Embassy, not a member. <laughs> I'm a member of the body of Christ, but a worshiper at Christ Embassy. You are wrong. Listen, and please listen. Listen, and please listen. I always remember the young multi-millionaire who was speaking to some students of business and um, in a business school. So, he said certain things, and one of the students got up and said, uh, I don't agree with that. He said, what don't you agree with? And he explained. And then uh, he said that um, the, the lecturer didn't tell them that. Doesn't accept that. The lecturer doesn't believe that. And uh, taught them something different. Well, the young multi-millionaire said to him, are you a millionaire? He said, no, sir. He said, is your lecturer a millionaire? He said, no, sir. He said, I am a multi-millionaire. And I'm trying to teach you how to become a millionaire. Which one do you want to listen to? He said, sorry, sir. And sat down. <laughs> Hallelujah. In life, it matters who you're listening to. You don't just say, well, I don't believe. Well, what don't you believe? And why? And what's wrong with believing it? The Bible, one of the greatest blessings that we have in our country is having the Bible so available everywhere. So it's, it's available to you. Get the Bible, commit yourself to studying it, and see what you come up with. Don't just meet someone in the street and, and that fellow tells you, well, I heard your pastor believes this and I don't believe it. And then he convinces you. You go back to church and you start telling some other members around you why you don't believe what you used to believe just because somebody in the street convinced you not to believe. So if you're, if you're a worshiper at Christ's embassy but not a member, I want to talk to you. Now, because of what I've already said, I don't think any of them would like to get up now. Anyway, if you, if you don't believe in being a member of a church and you are here, could you stand up? I mean, don't, don't, don't feel bad for what you believe or don't believe. Come out, let's discuss it in the presence of other brethren. Come, let's look at, let's look at it together. I won't be embarrassed, don't worry. 
Because I don't want to embarrass the pastor. No, 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 don't worry. No, don't worry. I don't mind. You can't embarrass me more than Jesus was embarrassed. Come. Is anybody here? I'll count five. And look around you if you can find anybody whose head is open. Probably I'm not seeing you yet. You don't believe in being a member of a church? You know? You can be a worshiper. You can go to the place. But you're, you're not a member. Is anybody whose head is up? Is anybody? Come, come. Come quickly. I knew they had to be here. I have a wonderful treasure, the gift of God without measure. We shall travel together, my Bible and I. Come closer, come, 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 come closer. Oh, by it. Oh, go your Allah Barat to be banu jamila. Oh, by it. Oh, go your What's your name? Beckley Akitubi. What? Beckley Akitubi. You're welcome. Yeah. You don't believe in being a member of a church? I believe in membership, but as in, I prefer worshiping where I feel I can get the fullness of God. That means anywhere. Not per se, as in not that anywhere, but particularly. Can I ask a question? Are you a member of this church? I'm not a member. I joined. I joined this year. I joined this year. I started from 31st of December. Okay, you have been here. Hold on. See. You understand what I mean now, huh? So you join 31st of December. Yeah. You join, but you're not a member. And um, you don't know when you're quitting. No, not that I don't know when I'm, when I'm quitting. No, like, this might... mo- like this morning when I was coming to church, yeah. my mom was asking me that, why, why is it I'm not, for, I'm not going with them to the other church okay. that I'm supposed to go to, right? I told her that I just prefer coming down here to okay. come and worship. And, yeah, and, and when you prefer to stop over in another church, you just go in there, you think it's all right. That's what you're saying, is it? Yeah, I feel like all right. because it's, it's all the same thing. We, oh, we oh. get the same thing. Okay, stand over here. Thank you. At least I want to understand you, okay? Praise the Lord. I, I'm trying to understand. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm yeah. Godfrey by name. Again, I'm, what's your name? I'm Godfrey. Godfrey. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. Yeah, well, what's the problem? Um, you know, I believe uh, sometime in membership, Formerly, I wasn't a member of Christ Embassy. Are you a member? No. You are a member now? No, yeah, but there's something I want you to help me out. Okay, okay, yeah. That what is, is it? Um, you know, the former church I do worship there, I do go there. Some people, most now, because most of people that worship there have not known whether I've left the church. I don't okay, see no, that, them. I'll come to that. Them. That's a different because, issue. Yes. You believe in being a member of a church. Yes, I believe. And you are a member of this church. Yes, That's sir. what you said. Yes, All sir. right. Whatever it is, I, I'll come to, I'll say something about the point you're raising, but it's somewhat different from what we're talking about. What, your name, Praise please? Saturday. No, no, let them see you. Yep. I'm Saturday Efoge from Edo State. So, to be a partnership of this church, I've been in many churches since ever, but the Bible tells me, says, if we be in Christ Jesus, our life will not remain the same again. But I've been in many churches. My life is still the same. Oh, your life is still the same. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, hold on. Hold on. But now. Praise God. All right, hold on. Hold on. I was doubting before. So I'm proud to come outside this moment to tell everybody that Christ Embassy, I'll be a member are from that day. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. You can go back to your seat. Thank you. Yeah. I hope a cell leader can easily catch him now. My name is... Your name? My name is Chris Umaru. I'm from Cardinal State. 
Uh, right from the very first time I get to know that I'm a real believer, I search Bible to an extent that I read. I cannot decode the place very well. All right. The, What's the problem? In the context, that is when Jesus Christ was dealing with a Samaritan woman. He said, neither in that mountain nor in Jerusalem, but, your, but the true worshiper shall serve God in truth and in spirit. Mm -hmm. And right for that moment, I have a conviction in me that I'm just a brother. Anywhere. Anywhere. And if, yes, sir. And from that time, once again, excuse me. And, and there is another research I carry on again. And I yes, understood sir. that by the reason of me identifying myself with the denomination, it's as if it's a, it's a problem. If I say I belong to this, somebody say he belongs to that, will not match as a believer, there is going to be a problem. So like, I just feel I'm a Christian. A I Christian. Just feel, yes, sir. Like um, I, I, you're neither of Paul nor of Apollos, right? Yes, no, sir. Cephas. I feel I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. Morning. My name is Tiolu Oguyemi. Yes. Please. I said I don't believe in being a membership of any society or church. Yes. I have my reasons for it. It's true. I have gone to churches and I'm still visiting churches. Yes. Yeah. I know the Bible. I know what the Bible teaches. I just, believe. Just a moment. How old are you? 36. Just 36. For now, 36. <laughs> this is for now. <laughs> Yeah. Of course, it has to be for now. More than that. For now. I, I thought you were about 60 or something. No, because you said, you know, the way you've read the Bible. You know? No, yeah, uh, I, I know uh, the Bible. When were you born again? Yeah, I've been born again in 1996. Or, 96. 96. Yeah. That's about nine years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, I once attained uh, Deeper Life. I went don't worry to, about it. No, worry. no I, I, I want to tell you why I don't believe in... Because most of these churches or congregations to say is that they, they, uh, there is a question that says humility is never stupidity. They tend to be human. You see, when you see them, if you see a member of Deeper Life, you know them by their dressing, by their uh, movement. They, are, they tend to be humble. I'm not really hitting the church, but I'm saying I don't want to believe in any church. I believe in what my mind tells me, and that's all. Because I have my own conviction from yes. God, so that's it. From God? Yeah. Come. Thank you. Your first name again is what? Tiolu. To God be the glory. Tiolu. Yeah. How are you? Fine. Good morning. You're welcome. What's your name, please? I'm John Thompson. John. Yeah, I saw you. You don't believe in church membership? Yeah. Why I don't believe in church membership is this. You see, this is my first time being in Lagos. And this is my first time being in this very church. And uh, it's, it was something that makes me come here. Of which, I've been seeing your miracle. I like watching your program in television. When I'm from Plateau State. Now, I've been watching your programs all the times, all the days. Every time, even I have some cassette of yours. And uh, you see, people have been coming due to the miracle that God has been using you to do for people. You know, people have been talking that they don't believe that this is the work of God. And I'm a kind of person of which maybe when we are in group, people have been talking something I like to believe before I said something. Praise the Lord. Coming to this Lagos and coming to this place, I never been here before. It's just when I came here, I told my friend that I want to worship in this very church. And he's a member here in this church. Now, this morning he said yes, that we have to. Because me, I do play music. There was other church that they said I should come and play music for them. Why don't said, you believe in membership? The reason why that there are some miracles that I have been seeing that God has been using you to do for people. And when they were saying that this is not honorary hand, so I said I have to come and confirm. <laughs> and really, why I'm here, I, I, you make a speech this morning. So that is the reason why that attracted me. I said no. 
what I've been hearing, it, it wasn't true. So when you talk about don't be, uh, believe in membership and whatever, I have been going to many churches. Me, when I sat down, I go to church and I have to Can walk. I ask you a question now? Yes. Do you believe those miracles are real? Yes. You will have miracles in your life? Yes. God bless you. Amen. Who is my name? Who is Lawrence? Actually, I never believe in miracles. I remember. I, I, never thought, I never thought of coming to this church until I met a friend at the jam center and she told me some things about the church. Actually, I don't believe in miracles because I thought maybe everything are conspiracy also. So she said I should just come and see for myself and stop believing in rumors and everything. So I came last week and to God be the glory, throughout this week, I could see changes in my life. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Thank you. God bless you. All right, you, both of you can go to your seats now. You and you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let, let's just um, let's look at this thing quickly. No, where are they going? I want to be through with them first. Don't worry, stand there. They can stand there. You said you believe that as a free Christian, you can... No, it's not a matter, it's not a matter, sorry, okay. it's not a matter of free Christian. Like my salvation, my, receiving, my baptism in the Holy Spirit, I did it myself, I read the Bible, and I, I prayed towards it, and God gave me the gift. So I visited so many other churches, and I listened to other ministers, and okay. they, you know, they preach uh, some, in some... In right, some can I talk to you now about membership? Would you like to know? I would like to know about membership. Okay, where's your Bible? My Bible is on my seat. Can you get it? All right, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, these were, I, I commend them for being bold enough to come forward and uh, share with us their thoughts on the issues. Because there may just be a few who didn't come out. Or you thought, since you already had these ones, they probably will be speaking your mind. So I, I would want to address these issues very quickly. When you talk about church membership, it is very true that just because someone is the member of a church doesn't mean that he is living a Christian life. We all agree. We all know that. Now, just because somebody goes to church doesn't mean that he knows God. We all understand that. All right? Now, just because somebody lives in your house doesn't make him a member of the family so we all understand that just because somebody attains the same school with you and is wearing the uniform of that school doesn't mean that is actually an admitted student of that school we all understand that but there is a clear difference between the one who is a member and the one who's not why church membership how did it come about? Is something wrong with it? If there's anything right about it, what is it? Okay. I would like to begin with Jesus, the head of the church. All right? Now, you recall that Jesus chose 12 men and made them apostles. Now, Jesus had, according to the scriptures, a multitude of disciples. But then, he made 12 men apostles. What is the meaning of apostle? It's from a Greek word that is apostolos, meaning a saint one. Which means that when he chose these 12 men, he intended to send them with the message of salvation. Alright? Okay. Now, in the days that Jesus ministered with these 12 men, something happened. Jesus sent them out to minister to other people as apostles. So one day, John and the other apostles met somebody. Turn to St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 9. Oh, glory to God. You glad you came? St. Mark's Gospel. Chapter number 9. 
I want to read to you. From verse 38. Have you seen it? And John answered him, answered Jesus, because Jesus spoke in verse 37. So John answered Jesus saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name, and he does not follow with us. And we stopped him because he does not follow us. Have you seen that? He said, we met somebody casting out devils in your name. Jesus sent them to minister to others. Now they find a, a guy somewhere casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And they said, Master, we saw somebody casting out devils in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us. He's not a part of our group. What does Jesus say? Verse 39. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our side. King James says, On our part. Come on, somebody. Did you see that? What's Jesus saying? Jesus didn't say, You see, if, if, he were, if he were right, he would be here. Go bring him here. All right, have nothing to do with him. Jesus didn't say that. He said, hey, don't stop him. The one who's not against us is for us. He says, let the man alone. Let him alone. He says, nobody who performs a miracle in my name will if lightly, easily speak evil of me. He says, it's not, it's not common for somebody who performs miracles in my name to speak evil of me. That's what Jesus said. He said, the one who's not against us is on our side. He said, leave the man alone. He didn't say, go and bring him here. He didn't say, all right, let's go join him. But the disciples thought, oh, there's only one group. So if there's anybody who's correct, who's casting out devils, he ought to be here. Jesus said, no, he doesn't have to be here. Jesus said, the one who's not against us is for us. So in other words, Jesus endorsed the man. He said, leave him alone. If he's not against us, he's for us. Why didn't Jesus say, don't worry, we are all together? He didn't say that. He said, leave him alone. I said, let's begin with Jesus. What was his approach? How did he think? How did he reason? What, was, what, what, what kind of a mind did he have? What type of a man was Jesus? How did he relate with issues like this? Hallelujah. All right. Is, is, is that good enough? Have you seen that? All right. Now, let's look at another thing. Then we'll look at, we'll look at the apostles for a moment. When Jesus said... The apostles out to preach they all remained in Jerusalem and when you study the book of Acts properly you discover they had several gatherings in different homes of people but they remained in Jerusalem until there was a, a an outbreak of persecution and many believers departed from Jerusalem because it was terrible to be in Jerusalem. But the apostles remained there. And Jesus really wanted the message out. So what did he do? A man was on a journey to Damascus. The Bible tells us how that Jesus met him with a light from heaven. Saul of Tarsus. And called him and made him an apostle. An apostle to the Gentiles. Now, look at this. Later on, anyway, 
the apostles in Jerusalem began also to preach beyond the borders of Israel. Paul started many churches. These are the apostles who started other, ch other churches as well. Now here's an issue. Turn to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12. Verse 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So what? Paul says he had also the signs of an apostle. The, the apostles of the Lord had signs of their apostleship. So Paul also had the signs of an apostle. What are signs of an apostle? It's right there. He calls them what? Signs and wonders and mighty deeds. He refers to miracles. He refers to mighty deeds. What are mighty deeds? Great works. Remember in, in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, the Bible says when Jesus went to Nazareth, he could not do mighty deeds. But he laid hands on a few sick folk. Why? Because they did not believe. And then he went into the synagogue's teaching. Mighty deeds are the blind receiving sight, the deaf hearing, the dumb speaking, the lame walking, the dead being raised, the lepers being cleansed. That's what Jesus called mighty deeds. Hallelujah. There are other kinds of miracles. But there are mighty deeds. And these are signs of an apostle. Who is an apostle? A saint one. That's what the word means. A saint one. Saint to where? All right. Turn now to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. From verse 15. I want to read from verse 14. From verse 14. He says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Another verse says, As my beloved children, I warn you. Those, is for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Are you listening now? He says, Though ye have 10,000 instructors, 10,000 teachers in Christ. Yet have ye not many fathers. You can walk into any church and be taught. It says, well, you may have 10,000 instructors. In fact, you don't even have to walk into any church. When you sit at home on a Sunday, you can get 10,000 teachers preach to you on television. You know what I'm talking about. He says, even though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you don't have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. What's he talking about? Was he personally responsible for everybody in that church being born again? Not necessarily so. What's he talking about? What do you mean by fatherhood it doesn't mean that you are the one that the one who led you to christ is your spiritual father is the one who is bringing you up for example your five-year-old son led you to christ because of something he said he heard something in children's church and so he said to his father abc he taught him something that he learned in children's church and led his father to Christ. Now his father's born again. So his father comes out to his friends and says, that, You know that my son is five years old. He's my spiritual father. He's not your spiritual father. Spiritual fatherhood doesn't mean that that fellow led you to Christ. It means as the one who is committing to you. A word that is responsible for taking your life from point A to point B, leading you from glory to glory. You understand this? An apostle is a saint one, which means that there is a man of God that is sent to you for your life. So that's spiritual fatherhood. And you're going to find yourself carrying in you 
the spiritual genes of his ministry. I'll show that to you in a moment. And that's very important. So now look at it again. He says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you don't have many fathers. You can only have one. The others are instructors. All right. Verse 16. Read it. One to go. Did you see that? He says, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. He didn't say, be ye followers of Christ. He said, be ye followers of me. Why? Because I have birthed you in Christ Jesus. So he didn't say, you can go to wherever they're teaching the word. He didn't say, you can go to any of the 10,000 instructors. No, he said, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you don't have many fathers. I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, you be followers of me. Let me show you another thing. Verse 17. For this cause have I said unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Paul knew his ways. He had a ministry, he had a calling, he knew the way that God wanted him to go. He says, I've sent Timothy to you to bring you in remembrance of my ways in Christ. So you do things the way I'm bringing you up. Don't become another person. You're like the guy who leaves home, goes to stay with his, with his neighbor's children, and comes home with a, a strange language. Now you're saying, I don't believe in Titan, I don't believe in first. Where did you hear that from? The neighbor's kids outside. Are you still there? You know, a lot of times we are tempted to think that we know so much, especially in things concerning Christ. There are many of you here. You attend business seminars. You don't even know the fellow who is teaching you. But you just believe that if you attend that seminar, you're going to be a better person. You don't even know his life. They may show you his resume. But that doesn't mean you really know him. It could even be a fraud. Fake papers could be there. You don't care. You've paid money to attend the seminar because you believe you're going to be a better person. You may know so much, yet you want to sit down there in front of that young guy. You listen to him. He may be old or young. Makes no difference to you. You don't even care about his age. All you want is, I want him to teach me in this seminar. I'm going to be a better person. Why can't you use the same attitude in the house of God and make sure you are ready to learn instead of coming to the house of God thinking that you know something? I don't want anybody to teach me about tithing. I don't want anybody to teach me about membership. What do you mean? But they teach you all kinds of stuff outside. Be humble. Be humble. It will help you. Hallelujah. It will help you. It will. Good enough, the material that we use is available to you. The Bible, the Word of God, is available to you. All the fundamental truths that we teach are from this book. And, and the book is available to you. You can sit down with it anytime, anywhere, and study it for yourself. So what is Paul saying? Why didn't he say, well, find anywhere that there's a Christian church and go there? He didn't say that. Even when he was out of town, he said, I've sent Timothy to you. To remind you of my ways in Christ. Let me show you another thing. Chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, Jesus, some of his disciples were offended at him. That's not a, you know, in our day, this wouldn't be the first time that somebody was offended at the preaching of the teacher. Jesus' apostles one time, his disciples, he had a lot of them. And then Jesus taught something and some of them were offended. And the Bible says they stopped attending Jesus' meetings. They walked away. And Jesus turned to the twelve and said, will you also go away? 
But these ones stopped with Jesus. They said, to whom shall we go? You yeah, have the message of eternal life. We'd rather stick with you. So you can preach something and, and, and some people can be offended. They didn't know better than Jesus. But they were offended at Jesus for his preaching. They said, how can he say that? What does he think he is? And they left Jesus. Let me read this to you. First Corinthians chapter number 9. I'm reading from verse 1. Paul says here, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? And not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. He knew he was their apostle. He knew he was the saint one to them. He knew it. To the point he said, if I were not an apostle to others, doubtless I am to you. You know, there are, there are people, haven't you seen children who deny their parents? I mean, there are children who deny their parents. They say, it's not my mother. It's not my father. Does that mean the parents are not their parents? Their behavior will change. But it wouldn't change the truth. How did Paul, why did Paul say the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord? Because the word that they were carrying was his revelation transmitted to them. Now you pick that revelation, now you're acting like you knew it from nowhere. You're acting like nobody taught you. But you've been here five years, you've learned what I taught you. Now you're going out and acting like you don't know me. But you've been living with the word that I gave you five years ago. That's the way some people are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be in Christ's mercy some time ago. Now. You ain't going nowhere. You, you, you think, you think you're, you're running your life. Like somebody said, oh, well, I can go to any church, you know. Just enter a church. Yeah, you can get an instructor there. But one thing is sure. Probably you have not yet been born here. Probably the word hasn't come into you yet. Maybe the revelation of what we teach and preach hasn't come into your spirit yet. Because when it does, you can go anywhere. You stay. There are few who take it and still go. Strain. And, and, and for that reason, I'm asking that all ushers would have a special meeting with the pastorate probably later this week i want new regulations for being an usher here because as an usher you remain standing and everybody sees you you can't be an usher here and move out of here and go and stand ushering somewhere else before you stand here as a member of the ushering department Showing everybody, you know, by standing like this as an usher, you are testifying. You are number one to believe what we believe. You are number one to believe who we are. You are identifying with us so much. So henceforth, we will not accept an usher until he has been ushered into You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. We have to set certain things in order. God said to me, son, keep growing. That's what he said. And I know to do that, from time to time, you've got to straighten certain things. Because as you grow, there's a lot of stuff you take with you. And so you stop somewhere and say, oh no, now I'm taking some stuff here. And some of them don't have to go with me. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Then we'll move again. Praise God. Do you understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, um, you still want more? You all right? You all right? Is it okay with you? Oh, you're just tired of standing. All right, get to your seats. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have to understand that Peter had those who believed in him. And this was something that Paul wanted to deal with about 
See, there's a difference between a member of a denomination and denominationalism. Do you understand? Okay, let me, let me put it this way. There's a difference between being a citizen of a nation and being a nationalist. Come on. Or you, don't, you still didn't get that? How many of you got what I said? You don't have to be a denominational man. But suddenly, whether or not we understand it or agree with it, the church of Jesus Christ has been broken down to denominations. We didn't start it. It was in Paul's day. There were those who were established by different apostles. What Paul said was, hey, you belong to Christ. You don't have to say, I am of Apollos. I am of Cephas. I am of Paul. He said, none of these died for you. You are a Christian. That's the first and most important thing. But that doesn't mean that you, you, you jump from here to there and from there to there. He's letting you know we're God's people. We should be able to accept one another. Now, if you went out and took a job and you met a, a Christian from another church and then you wouldn't talk with him, you wouldn't greet him, you wouldn't relate with him, then you are really a denominational man. You are denominational. You see that? So that's, that's wrong. You should be glad to see him. You're a believer too. Praise God. Oh, where do you worship? And he mentions the name. Glory to God. That's it. So we fellowship, but we will not do what? Indoctrinate. Hey, come on here. There's a difference. What do you, what do you mean by fellowship without indoctrinating? I'll tell you. It's like in your cells. In your cells you have fellowship. But the cell leader can, he can give you doctrines, except we hand doctrines over to him to teach. He has no right to teach doctrines. He can't give you things for your faith to be founded on. If he's going to teach anything on tithing, it's got to be what we taught him. It's got to be with our materials. He can't teach his own revelation. If you're, if you're a member of a cell or PCE or PCF, or even a satellite church where it says, well, the pastor, uh, Pastor Chris says, blah, 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 blah. But what I really believe is what I want to explain to you. Wrong! The reason, turn to Ephesians chapter 4, let me show you. You see, this thing is not about Pastor Chris, it's about truth and reality. Ephesians chapter number 4, I want to show you something. You there? All right. From verse 11, talking about Jesus giving gifts, ministry gifts. All right. He says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Did you notice these are ministers, ministries? Now he says, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He's not talking about the whole church, uh, everybody having a ministry. He doesn't say everybody, among all of us here, everyone has a ministry. You are either an apostle, or an evangelist. Or, no, 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 that's not what he's talking about. Now, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Let me, hey, I think I said something about that during the CRC, did I? I believe I did. Well, the explanation of that is this. This scripture that we just read. He's not saying, like some newer translations, some of them say that stuff and it's, it's wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because you studied in the context and in the original, what it says is, the body of Christ, look at the body of Christ. The mystical body of Christ is one. Yet we're individual members. He says, he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. In other words, those that God sent to some were apostles. 
They are called ministry gifts. These are people. Now that's different from, he gave some to be apostles. Now that's what some people think this verse is saying. That's not what he's saying. I know where, where that is taught. It's also in First, in first Corinthians chapter number 12. I can read that to you when we get there. But what he's saying here is, in the body of Christ, God has given some. He sent a man of God to those folks there. And the man of God that he sent was an apostle. Now, there is the general use of the word apostle, meaning a saint one. Then there is the office of an apostle. So, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. Some, some people are pastored by an evangelist. Some are nurtured, grown by an evangelist. Let me give an example. Kenneth Hagin had a ministry. Some of you wouldn't know about him, but the, the few of you that would know. Uh, he, was, he was called a prophet and a teacher. All right? There were those that he brought up in the faith. He wasn't the pastor. But he was the one called to reach these ones and groom them and bring them up in the faith. And they were consistent with him. But he was a prophet and a teacher. Now, you know, some people think that the church, a local church, should be, should be exposed to all five ministries, like they say, to the fivefold ministries. That's not what Jesus said. So they think that, well, we've got to have pro programs where we invite other speakers. Well, that's, not what, that's not what the Bible says. Some people say, well, uh, only Pastor Chris preaches in that church. I'm, I'm not coming there. Why, why can't he just invite other preachers? All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. When did you get that from? They say, well, there are, there are other ministries. Why do they expose them to other ministries? Who told you they're not exposed to other ministries? What do you mean by ministries? The way to expose people to ministry is not by inviting them. Ministry is grown in the church. Inside, inside our ministry, there are people who have the calling of an evangelist. We don't all minister the same way. We don't all give to the same way. But what they think is the preacher that stands out to preach is delivering us his ministry. But that's not the way. Now, there's some of you, hey, you just, I just misplaced you somewhere. You're, you don't understand all this stuff, but you really want to know about these kind of things. All right, then grow very fast so that in the next CRC you'll be inside. All right? Praise God. Okay, now let's finish this. What verse were we? He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. What is he saying? That every brother and sister in the church cannot just say, I'm standing on my own. I believe what I want to believe. I, I go where I want to go. He says, there are people that are specially called for your perfection in Christ. Have you seen that now? There are people who are specially called, anointed, ordained for your perfection. So it's not up to you. You can't say, I do what my mind tells me. That's wrong. The Bible doesn't say as many as are led by their minds. They are the, 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 the sons of God. No, it says as many as are led by the Spirit of God. And one of the things that you have to know, well, when it says are the sons of God, he doesn't mean are born of God. No, he's talking about sonship haven't been brought up. And I showed you the difference between a son as one that's born. The Greek word used there was technon. All right? And then a son, one that has been raised to handle authority, trained. The Greek word he used was heus, not technon. So it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the heroes of God. Which means the technon may not yet learn how to live or how to walk by the Spirit. So he calls him a babe in 1 Corinthians. A babe. And he says a babe is carnal. Meaning he uses his mind. Like the brother who came out here a moment ago, the, 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 the gentleman. He's a babe in Christ. But he's been born again since 1996. But he's a babe. Why? Because he don't have the Holy Ghost. 
To be, to be mature in Christ, you must have the Holy Ghost. Secondly, hold on. Secondly, you must know the Holy Ghost. It's one thing to have Him, it's another thing to know Him. And anybody, anybody who has an argument about speaking in tongues, now, uh, let me say this to you. It's so important, I don't want to take him up on that. It's not a church's belief. When you talk about speaking in tongues, it's got nothing to do with denominations. Speaking in tongues is for your benefit. It's a requisite in spiritual growth. If you don't speak in tongues, even though you are a Christian, even though you may have received the Holy Spirit, you will not grow. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue causes himself to grow. It's called development from within. If you don't have it, how, how, how is your mind going to be touched by the Spirit? It is true that some people have received the Holy Spirit but don't speak in tongues. But that is a problem. It's like a child that is growing but does not walk. He has two legs, but he doesn't walk his limb. So it's like a limb spirit. So it doesn't mean you don't have legs. You have legs, but they aren't walking. Because you see, speaking in tongues will energize your spirit. Not speaking in tongues will weaken your spirit. No, if I tell you to speak in other tongues, of what benefit is your speaking in tongues to me? No, why would, I, why would I be telling you about speaking in tongues? If you speak in tongues or you don't speak in tongues, of what benefit is it to me, you that are speaking in tongues? Is it not your mouth? <laughs> so I'm only showing you the benefit, what you will gain. Brother, that trouble you have been in, if only you would speak in tongues. <laughs> The limitations of your life will become as nothing if you will speak in tongues. The tongues we speak in the Bible says they are the languages of angels. When you speak in tongues, sometimes you are ordering demons around. Sometimes you are instructing angels. You have to understand it. When you have a situation in your life, you don't understand that situation. You don't know what to do when you speak in tongues. Hey, I Listen, listen to me. Listen, in churches where people speak in tongues a lot, they don't have many people queuing up for counseling. When speaking in tongues is not important, you have people trouble after trouble, even if they are dressed fine. Commend them, they'll tell you something. They said, oh no, I'm only just, I'm in dresses, so please don't look at me as something. Why? Because they know they are trouble. When you speak in tongues, you write above your problems. You write above your limitations. A lot of us face challenges in life. Now you see me like this. But that doesn't mean I don't face challenges. I face a lot of challenges. But do you know what? They are bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are bread. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show you something. When you don't speak in tongues, when you face something in your life, when you face some, some challenges in your life, you put your finger under your chin. You look like this. You are despondent. You may become discouraged. You may become afraid. You don't know what to do. But when you speak in tongues, you will rise from within you. Discouragement will be out the window. It doesn't matter what you're facing. Speaking in tongues will energize your spirits and give you dominion over your circumstances. How can somebody be arguing whether it is right to speak in tongues or not? If you were sick or diseased or afflicted, if only you would speak in tongues! It doesn't
doesn't matter how large the tumor is. It doesn't matter how large the cancer is. It doesn't matter how bad the, the doctor's report is. Speaking in tongues will destroy the sickness, destroy the growth. I know why I speak in tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Sundala Bashandala Mara. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, right where you are, stand up. Stand up right where you are. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, stand up anywhere you are. Just stand up there. And if you have received the Holy Ghost, but you haven't started speaking in tongues, stand up wherever you are. As we, as we pray right now, lift your hands up toward heaven.